All right guys, so for today's Friday one-to-one -one video, I wanted to do a bit of story time. So there's this one experience that I've actually been sort of thinking about this week. I was talking about it the other day. And it's something that happened about seven years ago. It was the end of 2010. And in fact, on our inner circle mailing list, it was one of the welcome emails. I used to tell this story. And that was about a year ago. So maybe there's some of you that were signed up over a year ago and you might have heard this story before. It's probably only like one or two of you. But anyway, I thought the story is quite funny and there's an important lesson there. So it's a good time to tell you about it. And as you can tell from the title of the video, the story is all about sort of how I finally came to terms with the fact that I should be avoiding high risk trading and high risk investments and start being more sensible. You see, there are three, I think three key ways that you can learn to avoid a bad situation. You can be taught or like warned to avoid it, like what I try and do on this channel, tell you, don't overexpose yourself, protect your capital, don't trade in high risk situations. Or like a mum with their kid, like don't touch that hot iron, you're gonna burn your fingers. But we still can't resist to try sometimes, which is then the second main way that we learn to avoid bad situations is actually to get our fingers burnt. We touch the iron, we burn our hands, we're not gonna do that again. We go in the markets, high risk, get our fingers burnt there. We'll probably still do it again a few times before we learn our lesson, but that's what we seem to do is like it takes a few times. God knows how many times I've had to have my fingers burnt until I finally learned. But it was this third sort of key reason, key way that we learn from these bad, about these bad situations that really taught me my lesson, that shook me to the core. It was like a reality check. And this is the situation where I think it's like a near disaster situation. So you narrowly avoid a potential disaster, like near death experiences, but it doesn't have to be that catastrophic. And this is what this story is all about. So let me set the scene for you. So we're talking about 2010, which means that I must have been trading for a number of years up to that point, a few years, which means I went through my initial high risk phase. I basically went through the phase that I think a lot of people new to trading and investing go through, where you don't have much money, then you get involved in very high risk sort of penny stocks. So I used to trade in the very, very high risk penny stocks, small cap companies, which were the oil and gas exploration companies. So these are companies where they're exploring for oil and if they strike oil and can put it into production, then their market cap will go up exponentially, like massively, and you'll make many, many times your money back. But the thing is they're financed, like the company's running on debt and they have a high burn rate. So if they don't hit oil by a certain date, they're gonna have to refinance again, go and raise some more capital, which means the shares are diluted, your price goes down, and basically you lose a lot of money unless they finally go into production again. But every day that passes, you're getting riskier and riskier in what you're doing. And it's this project that you're following each time, this exploration project. So I'd kind of left all of that behind me. But I'd got to the stage then where I was trading like commodities and forex. I was getting quite consistent. My trading was very dependable. Um, but it was still like I couldn't resist a little flutter every now and then. You know what? My trading is actually very consistent at that point. But it was just these little flutters all the time that I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and pinch something from this company here. You know, I'm going to invest in this one for a little while because they've got good prospects. And this is kind of what happened with this one company. So this company was called Desire Petroleum. And some of you may have heard of it because after this whole debacle, it kind of ended up in like mainstream press. Like back then people used to talk on bulletin boards, like forums, that kind of thing, but it's more bulletin boards for companies. And I think these sort of bulletin boards are still around, but Twitter was only out for like a couple of years or something. I think I opened my account in 2009 and we're talking 2010. So you kind of search Twitter for some news, but it wasn't like how it is now when everyone's talking about investments and stuff. So it's mainly bulletin boards and everyone was talking about this company. And I checked it out and I remember distinctly that the chart looked a bit like a Batman head. So you know how people talk about a head and shoulders pattern, well, this one was like a Batman pattern. And I looked at it and it had been at like 160 or something. It's one pound 60, 160p. It had dropped down to about 60 or something like that. And it got back to about 80. And it was like they were deep into this exploration project in the North Sea. And it seemed like a lot of people didn't think that they were going to strike oil, which meant that if they did, then it's, you know, the negative effects are always priced in a lot. I thought that it's going to be extremely positive. So it's back at 80p. I've seen it's been at like £1.40 or something like that. It's been down to 60p. I thought, you know what, for the downside and upside, let's invest. So I put in about £1,000, maybe £1,500 or something like that. I think I've got in a little bit above 80p, probably about 90p or something like that, 80 to 90p. And anyway, I thought I'm going to hold on for a little while and then I'll make a nice return on this. I said, worst case, it's going to maybe fluctuate a little bit. Because the thing is, like 2010, we're just like 
in the middle of this bull run, which meant that anytime there was negative news, then my investment would drop maybe like 10%, the high risk ones. But if there was upsides, then you have what we'd call a multi-bagger. And that's, that was my whole philosophy then. I'd slowly moved away from that to more dependable, consistent trading. I mean, I still learned some lessons after that, like a couple of years where I did still make mistakes. But anyway, so I'd invested in this company, Desire Petroleum, got in about 80 to 90p, looking at potential upsides. And what happens is a a Thursday or Friday, I believe it's actually a Friday, and I see that they make an announcement that they struck oil, right? A lot of people didn't expect it was gonna happen. They struck oil, this is fantastic news, and the share price shoots up. I think it reaches like above £1.40 again, but basically at £1.40, I cashed out. The reason is I'd learned my mistake from having equities in the past where they've made an, a, a find with their exploration and I think I'm gonna hold on until they hit production because then they'll get bought out by a bigger company, you'll make a lot more money, but really everyone else was doing buy the rumor, sell the news and then I end up losing a lot of the profit that I potentially had. So learning from my mistake, I didn't want to wait for them to put it in production. It hit £1.40, I was out, I took a 50% return, near enough, like depending on where I was between 80 and 90p. It was seven years ago, I can't really remember. But anyway, it was like a near 50% return that I'd made on that money. So I decided that night I wanted to go out and celebrate. So I was meeting one of my friends who was meeting a group of his friends at Leadenhall Market. So if you're from London or you know London very well, you'll know places like Leadenhall Market in the city on a Friday night are full of a certain type of person. Now these people, I always think of them as if they've just like walked out of the film American Psycho. These are people that want everyone around to know that they're an investment banker without even having to talk to them. They've got the floppy hair that you don't see anywhere else apart from in the city. They wear a certain type of suit, carry themselves in a certain way, drink drinks where they can't even pronounce the name properly of whatever gin is in it. And they just they just look slimy, right? They, they All they want to talk about is like investment banking, the city, whatever so-and-so did at lunchtime, oh, it was so funny, and like blah, blah, blah. Like, that's the type of person they are, right? These, you meet loads of them. And so I meet this one guy, and he looks a bit like Hugh Grant, right? With a floppy hair, looks like Hugh Grant, but except like with a mix of Scar from Lion King, because he had this scar down his face. And I got talking to him. He worked for a boutique hedge fund somewhere, and he was working in equities, and we were talking about different things from that week, and I mentioned Desire Petroleum, and he was very excited about this. Oh yeah, Desire's brilliant. I somehow managed to convince my VP or whoever it was to invest a load into Desire Petroleum last week because he's given me a trial, and it's gone up, like they're going to go into production, and he was really excited about this one share, and I was like, oh, well, that's funny. I was also invested in this, but I actually got out there at £1.40. I made like 50% return or whatever it was, and he looked at me absolutely disgusted. It was as if I was a mere peasant. He looked at me and was like, oh, but you know it's gonna go up a lot. They've only just struck oil. It's gonna go into production from here. You've got out way too early, like trying to make out like I don't know what I'm doing. Now, to be fair, I punted on that share and I got out at that point because I got nervous and because I'd learned from previous mistakes, not because I had any sort of insider knowledge. So anyway, I spoke to this guy for a little while and then I kind of got sick of talking to someone that was so arrogant and thought it was above everyone. And some of the things you're saying were just, disgraceful that I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna make my excuses and leave. So I got away from that slimy character and just enjoyed the rest of my weekend. So anyway, Monday comes along and then I'm going through my normal routine, checking out the markets, checking out the RNS, the regulated news service for any shares that I might be holding at that time, just like prepare myself for the week ahead. And on that Monday, a big news story came out that Desire Petroleum had an announcement to make about their oil discovery from Friday. So it actually turns out that the oil discovery wasn't quite what they thought. So they were drilling in the North Sea. They said they discovered oil. That's on the Friday. And by Monday, they revealed to the market that it was in fact water. So this company that is drilling for oil in the North Sea discovers water in the North Sea. As you can imagine, people weren't so pleased about that. It's quite different finding oil in the North Sea to finding water in the North Sea. You kind of expect that bit. So the share price plummeted and it hit 60p on that same day. I think it dropped by like 50% or something on that same bloody day. Now I was looking at it like, wow, I am lucky. Now in the next few weeks and months, it kind of dropped down. I think it finally got sold at about 26p or something like that, like after a couple of years. But that was a disaster situation for a lot of people because not only were there the people that got in when I got in who maybe lost like some of their investment value, but there were the people that saw that they had hit oil and thought now is the prime time to jump in and probably got in at £1.40 and saw their share price drop down to about 60p and eventually sort of trickle down to about 26p or whatever it was. 
you know, I thought about that guy that was working in the boutique hedge fund who thought he knew more than everyone else. I guess that he probably got the sack shortly after that, probably slivered his way out the door of that hedge fund. But I was looking at this like, damn, like all this time I thought the most I would ever lose is 10% because I got naive with the bull market we were in. I'd never really gone through a situation where the shares have been diluted. I'd never gone through a situation where the shares are metaphorically diluted by water. And in fact, like if I had got in at one pound or something and it dropped down to 26p, that's 75% of your value lost. You know, you need a multi, multi bagger to get back to that. Think about it. If you've got a share price at 25p then and you double your money and what it takes for a company to double in value, you'd still be at 50p. You're still halfway up to what you need. And then it needs to double again to get up to a pound. I started to realize like, shit, like if I don't focus on my risk management, then I'm not just going to lose 10% sometime, I might lose like 50% or more. And so from then on, I just promised myself I'm going to be a lot more consistent, a lot more risk adverse and be stable. And so I think a lot of you will have to go through this as well. But it's funny how you learn these lessons sometimes. Sometimes you learn in ways that you wouldn't expect. And to this day, I still wonder what happened to that guy, whether he kept his job or not. Maybe one day I'll find out. Anyway, guys, that's the end of story time for today. If you've got any questions, comments, thumbs up, leave them below, the thumbs up especially, and have a great weekend. And I'll speak to you in the next video, which will be tomorrow, going through the talking points of this past week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.